Right, let's move on to some of the questions you've asked. I'll just have a look through and um, we'll come up for the first one in a moment. So first up, we've got a question from Robert. The question is, will we be able to change the storage value on the Lambda target table? Um, so Robert, the answer to that is you won't be changing on the Lambda target table, but each fuel in the model fuel equation and the model multi-fuel equation has a separate storage value that you'll enter there. And our help file has some reference values in there, so um, take a look in there if you need to. All right, um, next up we've got a, a question from Timu. Um, if you use E85 as fuel, should the input for storage ratio be 1? So on your lambda target table, um, if you want to be running at storage geometric for, for any fuel, it's going to be a value of 1 on your lambda target table. But what you're going to have to enter um, for the actual um, AFR value for that fuel when you set it up is you're going to be entering in, um, it's, we've got some values in the help, but full ethanol is about 9 to 1, and we've, we've got an E85 value in there as well. So have a look in there, and that's what you'd enter for the actual setting. All right, we've got another question there. I guess the model will only use lambda numbers, AFR is just for display. And um, you're right there, so the, the model fuel equations, including the multi-fuel one, are only going to work with lambda values. Um, actually, the ECU does internally work with lambda values, and when you are seeing an AFR value reflected on the traditional fuel mode in your, in your AFR target table, it is actually just doing a conversion. So natively, the ECU is working on lambda, and for the modeled and modeled multi-fuel, you do need to use lambda in your target table. Right, Adrian has asked, um, I suppose AFR isn't an option because of the later explained multi-fuel equation, and yep, you're exactly right there, Adrian, because of the model multi-fuel, we've got two different fuel types, and the AFR stoichiometric value is not the same for the two different fuel types, we're going to be using a lambda. Got a, another question there from Timu. Is the new firmware available from the BIPEC page? And yes, it's available for download now, so head over there. Um, same on the link ecu.com, you can go there to get the, the PC link version. So they're available now, so feel free to download them. Have a look through the new settings and have a look at the help file as well. We've got a procedure in the help file stepping through how to tune a multi-fuel model um, fuel equation if you're using that mode. Um, so it is definitely worthwhile having a reading o read over that. Right, we've got a, another question there from TDP. Will Link provide full injector characterization? Uh, for injectors that we have, and um, we're able to test them here, so there is a chance that we'll be adding some injector characterization information. But for, for injectors which we don't have access to, um, it's something you're probably going to need to do yourself. The, the good thing is a lot of aftermarket injectors now are coming with that information from the, from the manufacturer or the supplier. So um, a lot of the time if you're buying good quality injectors, you're going to have that information provided anyway. So we've got a, a question there from um, Kickers, will it adjust stuff like crank enrichment based on fuel blend? And the answer to that is, is yes. So the cold start settings are going to, using, when using the multi-fuel model equation, is going to take into compensation looking at those two different fuel types and the current blend ratio from the fuel in the, in the, in the fuel lines. So it's going to look at that current blend ratio and it's going to mix the, the cold start settings there. You're going to have um, access to 3D tables and in, case, in the case of the warm-up enrichment table, there's two separate tables and it's going to blend between those. So on basically on ethanol where normally you do have cold starting problems, this new multi-fuel equation is going to take care of that. It's going to give you easy starting and that's one of the really great benefits of it. Okay, Walter asks, is there airflow meter support? Um, the actual load axis that's being used on, on the VE table, <coughs> whether it's, it's MGP or TPS or airflow meter, um, is available in each of the different fuel modes. Um, traditionally, RECUs generally haven't been tuned on airflow meter. There is limited support, and I know some people have done it, but certainly the vast majority of people out there are using MGP or TPS for their tuning for the load value. All right, I've got a, another question there from Garth. Will the calculations still work reasonably even if the fuel density is unknown or not exact? 
Yep, Garth. Um, there is there is some good news about that. So especially if you're using the multi-fuel equation, one of the parameters that you're asked to enter when you're setting this up is the, the fuel flow parameters when using your second fuel, in most cases perhaps ethanol. And some of the injector manufacturers are, are probably going to be supplying this in the future, but a lot of them don't supply it at the moment. And so you might ask yourself, how am I going to know what my injectors are flowing with the ethanol? Uh, there's, there's two ways you can do that. Obviously you can do testing yourself to determine that. And we've got a new injector testing function in, the, in this version, which is going to help with that. Um, but the other option is you can enter it the same as petrol and then your second VE table is going to have um, basically fudged numbers to make it work. But because you do have that second VE table, it's possible to do that and you're still going to get excellent tuning. We've got a, um, a few more questions there. So we've got one. Um, why can't you use AFR for the lambda target table? So I think we've, we've covered this already, um, basically because of, of using multiple fuels, um, we need it to be to be lambda because that, that means the lambda is common across the two fuel types. So that's um, that one covered. I've got a question there. Can I use two fuels with multi-fuel without an ethanol sensor? And yes, you can do that. While ethanol content sensors are very good um, because they automatically give you the current blend ratio and the fuel temperature, you can also use a potentiometer connected up to an analog volt channel and set the ratio yourself. Um, or you can also use a digital input where um, one position is going to be for perhaps petrol and the other position is going to be for your secondary fuel, perhaps ethanol. So there's three options there for, for telling me you what the current blend ratio is. Right, um, we've got a question there as well. Can I use a returnless fuel pressure system? And yes, the answer to that is you can. In, in the settings for the for the model fuel equation, we have a, a setting there for the, the fuel system type and returnless is an option in there. And it can work with or without a fuel pressure sensor, so it's definitely possible to do this. Um, now, we've got a question there. <coughs> when, I'm, when I'm using the tuning software, can I view lambda numbers as well as AFR? And yes, um, you can do that inside the tuning software. So um, if you press the U key or go up to the options menu, you can select the display type. Now, <clears throat> the exception is this when you're using the, the multi-fuel mode. It's going to have to be on Lambda, and, and that's because of the two different fuel types. Um, AFR doesn't really work for that. Um, but for the traditional one, you can certainly do that. You can press the U key or go up to the options menu and switch the unit type. You can also define in there. It's not just for, just for Lambda and AFR. There's all sorts. There's KPA and PSI, um, all sorts of unit settings, and you can customize them in there to suit what you like to do. So um, have a look in the, in the options menu. Got a, a question from Roger. Will there be two setups for the cold start? Like one for petrol and one for E85-100. Um, and yes, yes, um, Roger, there is. So there is um, basically two cold setups, cold start setups, two warm-up enrichment tables. And on, on a lot of it, you'll see a lot of the cold start settings. What they've actually got is a, a 3D axis, whereas previously on the traditional fuel mode, they, it was only a, a, a 2D table. Now we've got a 3D one, and what you can do is that, have that blend ratio on there, and it's going to basically change the cold start settings based upon the current blend ratio coming into the ECU from an ethanol content sensor or the, the um, potentiometer or the digital input switch, whichever method you use. So that way, you're going to have really good cold start settings. Um, using your second fuel or your fuel blended fuel mixture. Okay, I've got a, another question there. What are the other features in this firmware version? So um, some of the other changes, like we've already discussed, there is the improved cold start settings. So there's a basically we've, we've expanded the range of values that you can enter there, so you can get a lot more fuel in for the likes of ethanol for for cold start settings, um, and that's that's applied across the board on the fuel equations. So there's definite improvements there. Um, what else have we got in there? We've got improved ethanol sensor support. So normally with an ethanol content sensor, once it starts up, there's a, a basically an amount of time between when it gets its power and when it can start outputting a value. And what we've done in there is we've put in a, a setting where you can specify what is the value that the 
um, the ECU is going to use for its current blend ratio until the ethanol content sensor comes online and you can also specify the amount of time there so that's available and that's that's an improvement that's in the current um, 5.2.2 firmware now as well. The other, other thing we've got there um, in support of using this multi-fuel mode is that blend ratio which, get, which gets used in the multi-fuel mode can also be used for ignition tables and boost tables. So we've got some what we, a new mode which we call interpolate. So previously where you might have had two ignition tables and you used the digital input to switch between them. Now we've got um, a, a, an interpolate mode and what happens is the, the multi-fuel blend ratio is going to define how much of each parameter comes from each table. So one fuel table, the primary one, would normally be um, tuned to your primary fuel, perhaps petrol, and the second um, ignition table would be tuned to your second fuel, perhaps ethanol. And then the ECU is going to look at that current blend ratio and it's going to um, choose between those two tables the correct ignition angle to apply. And the boost, boost target table it works in exactly the same way um, for boost control. So in open loop mode you've got your wastegate, two wastegate tables and it'll, it'll go in between those two tables. And same for the boost target table if you're using closed loop boost control. Now we've got a question from Jan. Could I now with new firmware test my injectors and get data for SW software? Not every injector comes with good data. And yep, Jan, so there is a, a new function in there. Basically what it is, we've got an advanced injector test mode. Previously you could you could basically turn on each injector and make sure it was working. Now for injector one, we've got an advanced mode where you can select there, you can select a whole lot of different settings, the duty cycle, the amount of tests that it will go through and you can use that if you've got some measuring equipment to measure the volume flow through that injector and this is going to help give you um, some data for your injectors including flow characteristics. So um, do, do check that out. Okay, so we've got a question from Japan Cars. Is it possible to switch back to millisecond based instead of volumetric, volumetric efficiency if you have no or almost no, only a few info about the injectors? And yes, so we've got the traditional fuel equation there. And so that's as it's been previously throughout the G4 Plus and G4 firmware versions previous to now. Um, so it uses a millisecond based system and that's still available. So that's called the traditional fuel equation when you select your fuel equation mode. Blaine has written, this seems like it could be table intensive. Any idea how many tables we could expect to use on a full option modelled multi-fuel equation? Blaine, I, I would have to be guessing on the total amount, but you're right in terms of it does use more tables because we are using a lot of secondary tables. Um, but some of these tables are dedicated tables anyway, things like the, the second fuel or VE table, that's a dedicated table slot anyway. Um, and so depending on your ECU type, whether you've got a Link G4 Plus or an i-series table, you've got a lot more table allocation slots available for these secondary tables as well. Um, <clears throat> so far for our testing, we haven't run into a, a problem of hitting a limit there. Um, but, but do let us know if, if you do have problems, and this is certainly we can look at um, improving in the future. Um, yeah. Adrian, will we have two full sets of 60 tables for both fuels? Um, no, Adrian, um, so you have basically a, a 4D table, 5D table, or 6D table, um, but what it's going to work on is it's going to add on to the, the blended fuel number. So for instance, if you have um, some other factor that you want to run on your axis of your 4D or 5D table, um, it's entirely possible to run that, but it's going to get applied not just to the petrol trim or just the ethanol trim, it's going to get applied to the blended number. Let's have a look here, what else have we got? <clears throat> Okay, question from TDP. If you don't have a fuel pressure sensor on a boosted engine, does the software assume the regulator to be one-to-one -one rising rate or can the regulator be a different rate? So um, if you don't have a, a fuel pressure sensor on a boosted engine, um, what the ECU does is when you, when you search your fuel, um, fuel system type, you can choose either there's a, a map referenced option there and so with a boosted engine it's going to look at the manifold pressure and it's going to adjust fueling based upon that. If you do have a fuel pressure sensor though that, that's great as well because it does protect against um, anything going wrong in the fuel pressure system itself.
Question from Chris at Dynatune. Is there more boost control tables in the new firmware? So um, Chris, no there isn't. What you've got is you've got previously we had we had three switchable tables that you can choose but now you've got those still but you've also got the option of having um, table one and table two interpolated based upon the blend ratio of the fuel. Question from William. Can fuel temperature be measured from a traditional frequency based fuel content sensor or will we need a standalone fuel temperature sensor? Um, William, so yes, the, the ECU is capable of taking the fuel temperature from an ethanol content sensor. So um, whether you use the Siemens one or the Continental one, um, the ECU supports both of those and so it takes from those sensors the current ethanol content and the fuel temperature. So you don't need a separate fuel temperature sensor if you do want the fuel temperature coming into the, the modelled fuel equation. Uh, we've got another question there. Is the traditional fuel equation a millisecond based system? And the answer is no. Um, all of the fuel equation modes um, estimate the, the cylinder air charge um, and they then add the correct amount of fuel on it. It's not simply um, a multiplier on a millisecond like it was previously. Um, so yeah, the answer to that question is no. Okay, um, we've got a question there from Tom. Um, thanks for the update. Any of you visiting Pro Motorsport Expo in Germany as I'll be there for two days? Um, Tom, I'm not expecting to be there myself. Um, there is a possibility that Alan, our business development manager, might be there. And um, if he is, what, we're, what we can do basically is we've got some shows that we're coming up to soon. As we know, SEM is on at the moment. There's PRI coming up. We're going to have a stand at PRI. There's some happening in Europe as well. And we'll send out a newsletter um, to let you know what's happening there. And also check our Facebook page because quite often we update um, where we are. And if, we, if we're there, we'd love for you to come and chat with us. So um, keep an eye out there for a newsletter or on our Facebook page. Right. Um, the other thing is we've got, um, recently we've been running some, some training seminars throughout Asia. We were in, um, in Shanghai for a while and also in Kuala Lumpur running training for um, new dealers there. And um, next week I'm going to be heading off to Singapore with Alan, the business development manager. We're going to be conducting some training there. So if you're in that area and you're interested in getting some training, um, do have a talk to Uber, um, Uber Garage. They're going to be running the training in conjunction with us and yeah, we can hopefully get you on board for the training. Got a, another question there. Does Mixture Map and QuickTune work on multi fuel? And the answer to that is yes, they both work on, on the multi fuel and the, the modelled and the traditional fuel equations. 